just insane. I was a, I was a little skinny kid that just shot the ball a lot. And he just got better and better and better. And... To my right here, and of course, if you don't recognize him, is Nate Adrian. I had to be a lot tougher, I had to be a lot then bigger. Three reserves. His shot kept getting better and better. Little General Stores knows West Virginia, but what some may not know is what LG is doing in your communities. And I'm here to tell you how Little General, with the strength of their 100 plus stores, is helping to enrich lives and empower families in West Virginia. Like the Norma May Huggins Cancer Research Endowment Fund, which is fighting to cure cancer every day, right here in West Virginia. Locally owned and operated, LG has always been there and always will be. Little General Stores, committed to West Virginians. Boom! Hello, Monitor Nation. I'm the Wolfman, Dale Wolfley, and I'm head of the WVU Varsity Club, which deals directly with WVU former student athletes. And to my right here, of course, if you don't recognize him, is Nate Adrian, former WVU basketball star and guru. Uh, Nate, thanks so much for uh, joining us here. Absolutely, man. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> All right, good. Well, listen, Nate, we're doing something new here at the WVU Varsity Club, and we're trying to showcase what are they doing now uh, since you've graduated. and you know, with you, the last I saw you, you were actually doing the AT&T Sports Network broadcast of WVU Mountaineer basketball games with, of course, Warren Baker and Rob. How was that? Uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, we had a good time doing it. It's something I've never done before and never really had an idea of doing. And when they reached out and asked me to do a couple games, I, I thought it would be a good opportunity. But I really fell in love with doing it. You know, it's, it's great to be able to be at the games and talk about them and be able to inform people of what's going on. So I, I had a lot of fun doing it. Well, I think he's he's a lot like a dying breed that that some of us were. We we kind of try to find contact rather than run away from it, and and, and certainly Nate was that way. And, and 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 he loved getting on the floor. He knew how much the people uh, in the stands loved seeing people dive on the floor and and compete like that. And so, you know, he loved it. That was a that was a badge of courage for him. Yeah, so before we get into what you're doing now, let's go back and talk a little bit about your career at WVU. And, you know, you're a kid from Morgantown. I actually watched you in high school because my sons in Morgantown went there as well. And, you know, I, I sat there and I love watching you play. You had blessed skills. You could score, you could rebound. But what I really love the most, and Mountaineer Nation, I think you do too, that is when there was a free ball out there, you were scrapping on the floor, man. You were all hard. You were all give everything, you know. And it was really a lot of fun to watch. And just tell me, what was your experiences like at WVU basketball? What are your memories? Uh, I had a lot of great memories. Um, well, growing up, I wasn't always uh, how I was in college. I was, a, I was a little skinny kid that just shot the ball a lot, and that's really why I got recruited was for my shooting abilities in high school but when I got to college I realized that I had to change um, I had to be a lot tougher I had to be a lot bigger uh, I had to really adapt and that's really how I came into what I did they put in press Virginia my second year here so again I had to change because I'm not exactly a pressing athlete to say the <laughs> least but you know yeah got to roll with the punches and you know it all worked out for me. No, believe it or not the first time that I saw Nate that actually spoke to Nate Peaches Hines who was his seventh grade or eighth grade coach, brought him over to practice. And it wasn't a particularly good practice. And I'm like, well, this isn't gonna help any. And, and went over and talked to him. And then, you know, obviously started following him in his career at Morgantown High and, and, and in AAU in the summertime. And he just got better and better and better. And you, you just don't find six, nine guys that have the skill level that he has very often. I would be remiss. Uh, if I did not bring this up, but because I love the Huggy Bear, Coach Bob Huggins, you know, what was it like to play for him and what are the best things about him, what he does for the program? Playing for him is a lot different than what you might think. Um, what people see is him yelling, him screaming, him all bloodshot and angry, but that's not really all of him. Uh, off the court, he's probably the quietest person I've ever met. You can barely hear him talking when we're this close together. You got to pay attention to him. He's got all kinds of stories that he loves to share with you. So uh, he's a great guy. Uh, he really brings it. As soon as you get on that court, though, I mean, it, he turns it on. He, he expects 100% out of you, and he knows how to get that of every single player. And it's different for everybody, but he figures it out and he really drives it home. 
Well, he could pass it, you know, and I think that's a lost art. But he's a 6'9 guy. You give the ball to, he could bring it up the floor. You know, he could, you could run offense through him because he can pass the ball and make pretty good decisions with it. And, and then his shot kept getting better and better with more and more range. And uh, no doubt he'd have been the leading scorer in Morgantown High if he hadn't broke his foot. Mentally wise, what was it like when Press Virginia came in? And, you know, obviously it was a whole defensive mental attitude and Coach Hugs, you know, he's getting on and saying, this is what you got to do. What was it like for you personally to change? Uh, it was exhausting, honestly. Um, I thought my freshman year conditioning was hard, but whenever you're expected to press for 40 minutes a game, conditioning basically gets doubled. So it, it got even worse in that kind of aspect. And, you had to go into every practice knowing that you're going to be running up and down for three hours a day and just it takes a lot out of you so you got to be mentally prepared every day well he was exhausted but i but i think uh what was great was we had him and john holden so we had two six foot nine guys that were both long that you know that over the ball and we could substitute them in and out and and uh you know i think that the, the biggest thing that nate did to to make himself invaluable in the press was, you know, everybody talks about JC and rightfully so. I mean, he was the best on the ball defender in the country. Nate did the best job of, of, of angles, pursuit angles. You know, he, he wasn't one of those guys. Our guys would never catch a, a guy running down the sidelines in football because they're going to run right at him instead of taking an, a pursuit angle. And, and Nate learned pursuit angles, did a great job then of, of, of stopping people from running down the floor pinning people on the sideline and, and, and really caused a lot of the turnovers that were, that were forced. Okay, so now I ask this of everybody in any sport that I, I cover and we talk about is, what was your favorite, or briefly your favorite moments of WVU playing hoops? Hmm, that's tough. Um, so yeah, we beat three number one teams in the Coliseum mm -hmm. each one of those times. Well, that's okay. Uh, th those were all great memories. Um, all the in-state tournament experiences going out, well, outside of losing Stephen F. Austin, that wasn't a good memory. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, there was just a lot of good ones. Hard to explain. Uh, we never really could close out the big games we were in. We lost two uh, Big 12 championships, lost both the Sweet 16s we were in, so that, that was disappointing, but overall it was a successful career, I would say. Yeah, I would absolutely say, and you didn't even get an opportunity to redshirt. You had to play your freshman year. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, again, that puts a lot of pressure on you as a young man, but uh, actually watching you in, uh, for Morgantown High, I wasn't surprised. Be. I mean, he's one of us. Um, you know, born and raised here. Um, I think he attended every home game that he could when they weren't playing, when Morgantown High wasn't playing, and, and uh, I mean, had a great career there, I think. Uh, I think the the bad thing was him getting hurt at the end of his senior year, but you know sometimes that's good. Sometimes you you appreciate a whole lot more what you have when you don't have it. So, um, and then came here and like I said, I mean he he never ever gave us a day where he didn't give us his full effort, you know, which is hard to do. I mean it, 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 there's that's a lot of practices and and a lot of games and a lot of time and he loved it. He loved being on the floor. So, Nate, we already know what you've done in sports, and it's all been recorded in WVU history. But what were some moments or moment at WVU that you know you weren't a, an athlete, you were just a student? You know, what were your favorite things about WVU? Well, growing up in Morgantown, you were surrounded by the college atmosphere my entire life, but you didn't really get to immerse yourself in it until I actually got here and uh, got to go to the classes. You got to be free a little bit. You got to have fun, you get, I mean, just the whole experience at WVU, is, it, it's exciting. Um, the campus is wide open, it's a beautiful place, as you know, so everything about that really, I, I, it's my favorite university I've ever been to. So Nate, now that you've graduated and moved on, you have a couple of years uh, of being out of the game, and tell us about what you're doing now uh, as far as, you know, making a living. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm doing a couple of different things in insurance. I work for a guy named Joe Konchek in a company called National Benefit Programs at Columbus doing employee benefits, trying to save money. Well, I think all Nate needs to do is commit to coaching the way he committed to playing. And, and if he commits to coaching the way he commits committed to, to playing, he'll have a great career. I mean, and he'll be a guy who will raise to the, to the ranks very quickly. I mean, he walks in a room, he's impressive. You know, it's, it's a whole lot different some 5'9 guy walking in with wire rim glasses, you know. I mean, he, 
he's an impressive guy. And, and so when he walks in, I think he'll do a great job recruiting. Uh, he knows the game. I mean, he's, he's still in here all, all the time watching film with, with, uh, with our film guys. So he's got a great understanding and he loves the game. Thanks for joining us. This is the first ever, what are they doing now? I don't even know if that's what you really call this, but it's kind of like what we're, we're talking about. So I, I want to thank Brendan Birchfield here at Tropics Restaurant. It's absolutely gorgeous, awesome uh, for giving us this opportunity. And Nate, thanks for joining us here, man. Absolutely, uh, buddy. WVU Varsity Club, what are they doing now? 